Hello, um, this is the episode on K-STAB and haemoglobin um, and this corresponds to 2.3.8 uh, of the OCR Unit 3 F325 specification. So what does our specification tell us we need to do? So we need to explain how important iron is in haemoglobin, this molecule we've heard of that's in red blood cells, um, including how ligand substitution involving O2 and CO affects that, so CO being carbon monoxide. We need to state that the stability constant, which is abbreviated to K-STAB, uh, is basically KC, so that equilibrium constant for the formation of a complex ion. We need to be able to put equations into the K-STAB equation, and then we'd have to manage to deduce values by substituting values into that equation. And finally, we need to be able to relate ligand substitution and understand what K-STAB actually means and relating to the stability. So first of all, we're going to start off with haemoglobin structure. So as you probably know, red blood cells are the cells that your body contains that actually is responsible for the transportation of oxygen, uh, that diatomic molecule, around your body. So this is needed for things like respiration, uh, to provide uh, your cells with the energies they need to function properly. So how does it actually do this? And you've probably heard of this molecule before, but it's haemoglobin. Now, what is haemoglobin? So this whole molecule here is haemoglobin. Now, it's four linked polypeptides, uh, and it's a protein. So what you can think of uh, polypeptides being are the Lego. So they're the building bricks of proteins. So haemoglobin is a protein, and it contains these four pep uh, polypeptides here, uh, shown by the colors green, yellow, blue, and light blue. And you can think of these all as Lego bricks fitting together to make the protein. And we call each of these polypeptides a globin group. And we call these things in red a heme group. And now we're going to get onto this. So each polypeptide contains one heme group. Now, if we're going to zoom in and look at this skeletal formula for uh, the heme group, we can see that at the center of it, we have this Fe2 plus ion. Now, this is very important because this is our central metal transition metal ion that we've talked about previously. And this allows oxygen to bind. So this actually allows oxygen to bind. And then when it gets to your cells, it can provide that oxygen, uh, that they need, uh, the oxygen it needs to respire. So those cells, the oxygen they need to respire. So now we're going to look at the heme group. So the heme group is, as I said, that group we uh, looked at earlier uh, contained in haemoglobin. So heme literally means iron, so that's a good thing to remember. So Fe2 plus is capable of having a coordination number of six. That basically means that it can form six dative covalent bonds with the molecules around it. So of Fe2 uh, pluses, six possible dative covalent bonds, four are to this N. So this isn't just N on its own, this is N as part of this massive group here. So actually it bonds, it's a multi-dentate ligand because it forms a bond in four places on this one molecule. And one is to globin, which is that polypeptide we talked about earlier. So this leaves one, which I've shown um, through a star here, that's actually able to bond to things like O2, CO2, and carbon monoxide, which we will look at in a lot more detail now. Obviously, O2 is needed to supply those cells with the energy, uh, with the oxygen they need to be able to respire effectively. The CO2 it is needed to bind on there because that's the waste product produced by the cells, and that needs to be obviously removed. And CO we'll look at in a lot more detail now. So carbon monoxide. So as we've talked about, we've talked about this idea of affinity. So how easily and how strongly the central metal ion will form bonds with something. So with O2 and CO2, it fairly easily undergoes ligand substitution. So it means that O2 and CO2 are sort of freely swapped out depending on the concentrations. So in uh, cells which need a lot of oxygen, they're going to be able to release a lot of O2. And in cells which have respired a lot and need to remove uh, CO2, they are also equally capable of substituting out O2 and replacing it with that CO2. 
So, despite the fact that O2 and CO2 have high affinities already to Fe2+, none of them has as high an affinity for that central metal ion as CO, which is carbon monoxide. Carbon being the C, and mono meaning one, oxide meaning, obviously, the oxygen. So basically, once CO has been bonded, it, it can't be substituted for O2 because that bond is too strong. The binding it forms is too strong and can't be displaced um, through a substitution reaction with O2. That basically makes it irreversibly damaged. So once it's had CO bound to it, it can't actually undo that process and form a fully functional hemoglobin group again. Tissues need oxygen to respire, which I talked about earlier, and that produces energy. So without the oxygen um, being able to be transported to these tissues, you're actually not going to produce enough energy, and these are uh, the consequences of that. So breathlessness we can explain. Basically, you're not getting enough oxygen to your blood, so your breathing rate is naturally going to try and increase to get that oxygen into the fewer amount of um, hemoglobin you have. Um, you might lose consciousness because your brain isn't getting enough energy to function, so it will just begin shutting down. And that is it. So, K-STAB. K-STAB is basically equal to KC. It's just applied in a circumstance where you have a central metal ion and you have this complex form, so you can deduce the strength of that complex. So you calculate it in the same way as you would calculate Kc, which is basically your concentration of your products over your concentration of reactants. So it tells you how stable the complex is. A higher k stab means you're going to have more products to fewer reactants, so it's going to be more stable. A smaller k stab means you're going to have more reactants to fewer products, which means you're going to have a less stable complex. And also, it's important to note that water, unless it's as part of your ligand, should be left out of this K-STAB equation. So some, a lot of the time you will get uh, H2O being um, substituted for another ligand, and you wouldn't include this as one of your products. So I'll go on to explain that next. So these are the rules of K-STAB. If you're ever asked to write that K-STAB equation, which we saw was part of our specification, we're going to follow the following rules. So we're going to treat it effectively as KC. So we're going to still put our products over reactants. One of the rules of that KC is obviously that the number of molecules in your equation, so you can see here we have 4Cl, is going to be the power to which you put that concentration in the equation. So here we have 4Cl. So we'd look to put Cl to the 4. So that Cl ion, Cl minus ion, is going to be to the 4. Ignore H2O on its own. So here I've just put a cross through it, but if you get H2O, in this case we've had uh, 6 of those H2Os being um, substituted for 4 of these Cl minuses. You wouldn't include this as part of this equation. That is because the concentration stays fairly constant. So just make sure you remember to ignore that. Make sure also, I see this a lot, that people don't put square brackets over square brackets. So here you can see cobalt um, hexaaqua has been shown as uh, in square brackets because that obviously represents the uh, complex that is there. But it's also a concentration of this complex. So here you can see I've represented it below. I've actually put, you, you can see the complex's brackets here, and you put an extra set of brackets around to imply that's concentration. In the case of CL, you can see that it doesn't have brackets around it because obviously it's not a complex, so you just need to put one set of brackets around. With cobalt um, chloride here, um, we're going to also need to put square brackets around it because it is a complex, so it already has square brackets, so we end up with these two sets of square brackets. And the last thing is just remember to calculate the units. You probably know this because it's uh, emphasized a lot when you're doing KC, but make sure as it's a constant, it's going to have different units every time. So in this case, we can see that we have our concentration and a concentration. So our overall uh, order on the bottom is 5 because we've got 4 plus 1 here and we just have 1 on the top. So then if you follow these steps, and you might know them already, you end up with dm to the 12 mole um, 
per mole to the minus 4. Okay, so can we go about ticking off this specification? So we know how important iron is as that central metal iron in hemoglobin. And we can describe how it's important um, in substituting O2 and CO2 freely. Um, and we know that once CO2 has substituted for either O2 or CO2, that that is irreversible. We are able to state that uh, K-STAB is basically KC um, for the formation of the complex ion. And that is always important that that's insolvent, so it's aqueous, basically. We can um, use a chemical equation to make a K-STAB equation, and we can substitute values into that and work out the units from that. And finally, we are able to relate the substitution reactions to the stability constant and of course we can now say that a large k stab means that you actually have um, a large stability in your complex and that the uh, a small k stab would be the opposite so it would be a small uh, stability within that complex and that is your spec ticked off and thank you for watching